Hi, and welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. Tonight, I'm gonna finish up my kids' Easter basket before we get to the quilt. And since Easter's coming up pretty fast, I figured I'd take advantage of them being asleep and put together their adorable little baskets. You know, a couple little peeps, not too much sugar, you know, nothing too big or crazy. So we have the cute baskets, we have the blue and the pink and the purple. Oh, and speaking of purple, tonight's quilt is using purple ombre fabrics to make an amazingly easy quilt called Split Square. And I'm gonna machine quilt it with rulers, I can't wait. Oh, and before I forget, I made myself a cute little Easter basket as well. It has all my favorite fabrics and rulers. It's like somebody really knows me. Well, let's get to making this quilt. Tonight, I'm working on the split square quilt pattern designed by Monique Dillard, and I'm using these darling pre-cut rolls. They're actually six inch strips by width of fabric. And what that's gonna let us see is all the beautiful different colors of the ombre fabric. So let's check out the beautiful colors that are gonna be in our quilt. So pretty. We have some grays, some blues, and I just love the different colors. It's gonna add a little bit of dimension to this really easy pattern. More blues and yep, some beautiful purples. And then once it's finished, I get to quilt it with some rulers. And that reminds me, I just so happen to have a brand new class with Craftsy called Quilting with Rulers, Free Motion Made Simple. Can't wait to get to that part. Let's get cutting. The first thing I'm gonna do is separate out a few of these strips because they're gonna go on my mitered borders. Yes, we're doing mitered borders, but don't worry, it's not gonna be that hard. So let's see, what colors will I pull out? We'll just pull out a few of these. All right, we're gonna see you all here in a little bit. And then I'm gonna take half of my strips and cut them into smaller strips. All this color. All right, so we're gonna start with these few strips. So I'm gonna cut the six inch strips into two smaller ones. I'm just gonna line up my ruler and then cut it with my rotary cutter. Put it. Oh, look at this. They left me a cute little egg. It says mom. My kids are awesome. They always like to leave me. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a cute little note. Let's see what it says. Mom, we love you. Oh, that's adorable. I think I'll set it right here in my little snack dish. All right, so let's get to cutting. And this gets to go in their Easter basket to make it look a little fuller. Love that. The rest of the strips are gonna be cut into two smaller strips. One will be perfect for a scrappy binding and the other will go with these strips right here. Now that I have some strips cut out, I'm gonna sew them together to make a strip unit. So now what I'm gonna do with my strips is I'm gonna sew them in a strip unit where I take a wider one in the middle and put a different skinnier color on either side. Now there's no specific color placement with this. It can be whatever we want it to be, but I do want to pick different colors because if I'm taking the time to sew this together, I want it to be obvious that that's what I'm doing. So let's do it. All right, and the first strip unit is finished. This is where we're gonna see those beautiful colors kind of work together. And I'm gonna press it and then cut it into some fun triangle shapes. Making sure that these seams are pressed nicely will make it a lot easier when it comes to cutting and sewing it together in the block. The pattern says just press to one side, so I'll just pick a side and press. Now this strip unit is pressed and I'm gonna use my ruler to cut it into triangles. Now we're gonna use that 45 degree line on your ruler, that one we never know what it's for, to cut this into triangles. So lining up the 45 degree angle line with the bottom, just like that, is gonna make sure that this cut goes at a 45 degree angle. So my first side of my triangle is cut and I'm gonna do the same going the opposite direction. And I think this is such a fun technique because you get a triangle with different strips in it. I think this would be fun for a more modern project. And then I'm going to flip the ruler again and cut a triangle going the opposite direction. But this one has a slightly different fabric placement, but that's what's gonna make this quilt look amazing, all the scrappy bits of color in it. I'm gonna finish cutting up this strip unit and then we'll assemble it into a block. So I have the triangles for my first strip unit and then I have more triangles from another one I put together. Now we're gonna arrange them in groups of four to make a split square. 
So what I'm gonna do is arrange these so that the little triangles come together in the center. And because I want a nice scrappy look, I'm gonna try to not have any two colors next to each other. So maybe do something like that. So what I'm gonna do is sew two triangles together and sew the halves together to make my square. Just like that, my first block is finished. Now I'm gonna give it a press, do that about 20 more times, and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes together. So I'm gonna lay out the first couple rows of this quilt, and this is where we really get to see all those bright, bold colors come out. And I just have to lay out four blocks in each row. Oh, look, another little, little Easter egg. My kids are adorable. That kind of looks like Drake's handwriting. Mom, we have a surprise for you. I don't, I don't see a surprise. Maybe the surprise is I get to sleep in tomorrow. That would be so nice. All right, back to the job at hand. And I'm gonna arrange the blocks or flip them around just to kind of keep the fabric random. It's not a big deal if I have two colors next to each other, but since I'm going for the scrappy kind of look, I'm gonna try to change it up as much as I can. That's so cute. Let's turn that one around. I mean, I don't wanna be weird or anything, but this is looking fantastic. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna sew these together and get the rest of the top assembled. All right, this quilt is finished. I'm loving the different colors and shades of the fabric, so beautiful. And if you think it's too small, don't worry, it's still gonna get some borders on it. Now, remember those strips I set aside earlier? Well, they're back, and they're gonna be the borders of this quilt. And I've actually sewn them together with a mitered seam so that they join like that. Now, when we put our borders on, normally I sew it to the edge, and then sew the top one right across. But now, with these borders, I want them to come together and have a nice mitered seam in that corner. Now, if that sounds scary, it really isn't. In fact, this is the way my grandpa taught me to sew borders on. I didn't know the easier way till way after I learned how to do it. So the trick is, I'm gonna sew my borders onto the sides of this quilt, but I'm gonna stop about a quarter of an inch short of the point. Once I have that done, I'll show you how the mitered comes together. I have sewed on my borders onto the top, but I've left about a quarter inch gap in between here. I'm not sewing it all the way to the end, so that's one big difference there. Then the way my grandpa taught me how to do mitered borders was you'd lay one out straight, just like this. So you wanna make sure your border is at least longer than the width of your other one. And I'm gonna take my other piece of fabric right here and lay it so that it turns into the border. So at this point, I'm gonna have my two borders on top of each other. Now, if I press this with an iron, it's gonna give me a nice crisp fold so that when I go to my sewing machine, all I have to do is fold it back like this, have that fold right there, lay it right on top of each other and sew directly on that line. Then I can trim it, pull it open, and the result should be a nice mitered corner that's gonna look fantastic on this quilt. Now, I know that was kind of a quick rundown. If you're not sure how that all goes together, Craftsy has an amazing blog post that goes into that in detail. And you can find that in the description box below. So I'm gonna get my mitered corner sewn, get it sandwiched, and get to the quilting. I'll see you there. All right, let's get to the quilting. For this quilt, I'm gonna use my new rulers with creative grids that are made especially for machine quilting. And if you've taken my class on Craftsy, machine quilting with rulers, free motion made simple, then you've already seen these. And if you haven't, you can find the information about that in the description box below. And I think I'm gonna play around with these and use them to make some different designs. First up, I'm gonna use Squiggy, which is great for serpentine lines, but I'm actually gonna use it a little differently to make a fun border design. So I used the whole ruler to make these fun, pointed, ovally kind of shapes that fit so nicely in the border. Now I think I'm gonna use a straight ruler, slim, to do a little bit of dot-to-dot -dot quilting in the blocks. Now 
Now I love dot to dot quilting because you can quickly quilt a block without marking it. So what I've done with this ruler is go from dot to dot to dot using those reference points on the blocks to fill it in. Then just adding some more diagonal lines, echoing it, and quickly quilting this portion of the block. And it's going to look amazing when I do the other three portions of this block. But what I'm going to do is take a quick break and use my Archie ruler to quilt some fun arches in this border. So Archie's meant to work in three inch borders, but I thought it would be fun to double them up and overlap them to create a fun effect. So what I did was just use my ruler to quilt a row of those arches. And then I traveled and quilted them so they offset each other just to give them a little bit of a different look. And I think eventually I'll come back and add another row of arches on top of the one I just quilted. But I wanna go ahead and try out Shorty. I can't wait to use that on a border as well. All right, now that was a lot of fun. Now Shorty is meant to be palm sized so that it can fit well in any kind of machine, but I decided to do a fun little border treatment with it right here. Now I think my challenge is gonna to be to use all these rulers in a bunch of different ways and see how many variations I come up with. And I can't wait to show you how it turns out. And if it seems like a lot of information, don't worry. I put together some free quilting diagrams so that you can see exactly what I do in each area of the quilt. I'll have two versions, a turn in early, which is an easier all over kind of thing, and an up all night if you really love machine quilting as much as I do. So make sure you download that, the information is below, and you can also find out where to get this awesome pattern as well. Well, I'm gonna get back to work, I'll see you in a bit. And this Split Squares quilt is finished. Hopefully the mitered borders didn't scare you because they're actually really easy to put together. And I love how the fabrics come together in the corner, gives you that nice mitered corner that really fits the rest of the quilt pattern. And of course, you know the machine quilting was my favorite part, getting to use all the rulers and coming up with so many different designs. Man, that just makes my heart happy. And don't forget, I have that brand new class on Craftsy, Quilting with Rulers, Free Motion Made Simple, in which I show you how to use rulers on all types of areas of your quilts. You can find the information about that in the description box below. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Midnight Quilt Show and leave a comment letting me know what you think about machine quilting with rulers. Oh, my kids left me another egg. They're so cute. I wonder what little note is in it this time. They're so cute. Mom, we saw your basket. Hope ours is as good as that one. Guess I better go back to the candy store, huh? Well, until next time, dilly dilly.